After a while, he said, that's enough sticks. Now I want leaves and feathers and things like that to make the inside nice and soft. The building of the nest went on and on. It took a long time, but at last it was finished. Try it, said Mr. Greg, hopping back. He was very pleased with his work. Oh, isn't it lovely? cried Miss Grab, going into it and sitting down. I feel I might lay an egg any moment. The others all got in beside her. How warm is it is, said William. And what fun to be living so high up, said Philip. We may be small, but nobody can hurt us up here. But what about food, said Miss Grab. We haven't had a thing to eat all day. That's right, Mr. Grack said. So we will now fly back to the house and go and buy an open window and get the tin of biscuits then the ducks aren't looking. Oh, we will be picked to bits by those dirty great ducks, cried Miss Grack. We shall be very careful, my love, said Mr. Grack, and off they went. But then they got to the house and they found all the windows and doors closed. There was no way in. Just look at that beast eat the cooking on my stove, cried Miss Grack as she flew that past in the kitchen window. How dare she? Look at that one holding my lovely gun, cried Mr. Gun. Out of them is lying in my bed. Well, William, looking into a top window. And one of them is playing with my electric train, cried Philip. Oh dear, oh dear, said Miss Grab. They have taken over the, our whole house. We shall never get it back. And what are we going to eat? I will not eat worms, said Philip. I would rather die or slug, said William. Miss Grab took the two boys under her wings and hugged them. Don't worry, she said, I can mince it all my very fine. And you won't even know the difference. Lovely slug burgers, delicious worm burgers. Oh no, cried William, never, said Philip. Disgusting, said Mr. Greg. Just because we have wings, we don't have to eat bird food. We shall eat apples instead. Our trees are full of them, come on. So they flew off to an apple tree. But to eat an apple without holding it in your hands is not at all easy. Every time you try to get your teeth into it, it just pushed away. In the end, they were able to get a few small bites each. And then it began to get dark. So they flew back to the nest and lay down to sleep. It might have been at about this time that I back in my own house picked up the telephone and tried to call Phil. I wanted to see if the family was all right. Hello, I said, quack, said a voice at the other end. Who is it? I asked, quack, quack. Philip, I said, is that you? Quack, 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 quack. Oh, stop it, I said. Then there came a very funny note. It was like, Bird laughing. I put down the telephone quickly. Oh, that mad finger, I cried. What has it done to my friend? That night, while Mr. and Miss Greg and Philip and William were trying to get some sleep up in the high nest, a great wind began to blow. The tree rocked from side to side, and everyone, even Mr. Greg, was afraid that the nest would fall down. Then came the rain. It rained and rained, and the water ran into the nest and they all got as wet as could be. And oh, it was a bad, bad night. At last the morning came and with it the warm sun. Well, said Miss Grack, thank goodness that's over. I wanted want to sleep in the nest again. She got up and looked over the side. Help, she cried, look down there. What is it, my love, said Mr. Grack. He stood up and peered over the side. He got the surprise of his life. On the ground below them stood the four enormous ducks as tall as man, and three of them were holding guns in their hand. One had Mr. Gregg's gun, one had Philip's gun, and one had William's gun. The guns were all pointing right up at the nest. No, no.
no, no, called out Mr. and Miss Grack both together. Don't shoot, please don't shoot. Why not, said one of the ducks. It was the one who wasn't holding a gun. You are always shooting at us. Oh, but that's not the same, said Mr. Gun. We are allowed to shoot ducks. Who allows you, asked the duck. We allow each other, said Mr. Grack. Very nice, said the duck. And now we are going to allow each other to shoot you. I would have loved to have seen Mr. Grack's face just then. Oh, please, cried Miss Grack. My two little children are up here with us. You wouldn't shoot my children. Yesterday you shot my children, said the duck. You shot all six of my children. I'll never do it again, cried Mr. Grack. Never, never, never. Do you really mean that? Asked the duck. I do it. I do mean it. Asked Mr. Grack. I'll never shoot another duck as long as I live. That is not good enough, said the duck. What about deer? I will do anything you say if you on, will only put down the, those guns, cried Mr. Grack. I'll never shoot another duck or another deer or anything else again. Will you give me your word on that, said the duck. I will, I will, said Mr. Grack. Will you throw away your guns, asked the duck. I will break them into tiny bits said Mr. Grack, and never again need you be afraid of me or my family. Very well, said the duck. You may now come down. And by the way, may I congratulate you on the nest, for our first effort is it's pretty good. Mr. and Miss Grack and Philip and William hopped out of the nest and flew down. Then all at once everything went black before their eyes and they couldn't see. At the same time, a funny feeling came over them all and they heard a great wind blowing in their ears. Then the black that was before their eyes turned to blue, to green, to red, and then to gold and suddenly they were standing in lovely bright sunshine in their own garden near their own house and everything was back to normal once again. Our wings have gone, cried Mr. Gaunt, and our arms have come back, and we are not tiny anymore, cried Miss Grack. Oh, I am so glad. Philip and William began dancing about with joy. Then high above their heads, they heard the call of a wild duck. They all looked up and saw the four birds lovely against the blue sky, flying very close together, heading back to the link in the woods. It must have been about half an hour late that I m myself walked into the grass garden. I had come to see how things were going, and I must admit I was expecting the worst. At the gate, I stopped and stared. It was queer sight. In one corner, Mr. Grab was smashing all three guns into tiny pieces with a huge hammer. In another corner, Miss Grab was placing beautiful flowers about. 16 tiny mounds of soil, which I learned later were the graves of the duck that had been shot the day before. And in the middle of the yard stood Philip and William with a stack of their father's best barley beside them. They were surrounded by ducks, doves, pigeons, sparrows, robins, larks, and many other kinds that I did not know and the birds were eating the barley and the boys were scattering by the handful. Good morning, Mr. Grack, I said. Mr. Grack lowered his hammer and looked at me. My name is not Grack anymore, he said. And owner of the feather friends, I have changed it from Grack to Egg. And I am Miss Grack, Egg, said Miss Grack. What happened, I asked. They seem to have gone completely doggy, all four of them. Philip and William then began to tell me that whole story, and they had finished. William and look, there's the next. Can you see it right up in the top of the tree? That's where we slept last night. I built it all myself, Mr. Egg said proudly, every stick of them. If you don't believe us, Miss Egg said, just go into the house and take a look at the bathroom. It's a mess. They filled the tub right up to the brim, Philip said. They must have been swimming around it, it all night, and feathers everywhere. Looks like water, Mr. Egg said. I'm glad they had a good time. But then 
From somewhere over by the lake, there came a loud bang. Someone's shooting, I cried. They'll be Jane Cooper, Mr. X said. Him and his three boys. They're shooting mad. Those Coopers are the whole fam. Suddenly, I started to see red, and I got very hot all over. Then the tip of my finger began tingling most terribly. I could feel the power building up and up inside me. I turned and stared running towards the lake as fast as I could. Hey, shouted Mr. Egg. What's up? Where are you going? To find the Coopers. I called back. But why? You wait and see. I said they'll be nesting in the trees tonight. Every one of them.